Welcome, everyone. I'm so thrilled to connect with you all again today for this weekly mentorship on the courts of heaven. In our time together, we're going to explore a powerful but often overlooked key to breakthrough in our prayer lives, the courts of heaven. Uh, I, I know many of you have likely experienced frustration and the discouragement when prayers seem to go unanswered. Uh, you, you contended with persistence and intercession and spiritual warfare, but yet you find yourself waiting for your breakthrough. Well, today, I believe the Holy Spirit wants to impart fresh revelation that will radically transform and empower our lives. The courts of heaven are not merely a metaphor, but a genuine spiritual reality that as we as believers have access to. God has established a legal system in the heavenly realms where we can present our cases directly before him and see his justice and act on our behalf. I want to help you unpack how the courts operate, how to present your appeals boldly before go, go before God's throne, and how to exercise our spiritual authority and experience victory in Jesus' name. My prayer is today that this teaching will revitalize your passion for prayer and give you new keys to breakthrough as we rightly approach God's throne of grace persistent in intercession we learn to operate skillfully in the courts of heaven we see long-awaited prayers get answered and the floodgates of blessings released from the heavens so let's position ourselves to hear the verdict of heaven today uh, when prayers seem unanswered, have you ever prayed persistently uh, without answer? <laughs> it's been hours upon hours in intercession, yet experienced silence from heaven. I was just working with a client, well, was just going through that. You know, they were praying consistently. He's a, a client that's been coming for a while, and he's had some really demonic oppression issues. You know, and uh, it just felt like there's just been silence there. Petitioning the Lord for healing, provisions, or breakthrough only met with frustration and seemingly unanswered prayers. Often, uh, you have reached a point of wanting to relinquish your request entirely, feeling like giving up to your appeals to God simply because this lack of response. You've been reaching out to the Lord, but you haven't, you haven't got your answer yet. Many believers engage with intense spiritual warfare only to suffer backlash or retribution from the enemy. <laughs> I had a client just said that. They said, every time I, I try to do the strategies here, uh, the enemy torments me and it attacks me even stronger. The, you know, the onslaught of opposition after contending in prayer uh, has caused some to withdraw from spiritual battle altogether for fear for repercussions. But we have not to lose heart. We have an open invitation from Christ to boldly approach the throne of grace in our time of need. I'd like to share a testimony from last week's uh, walkthrough in the courts of heaven. It was from a woman named C.B. Uh, she uh, is a mother of three from Missouri who attended the webinar. She was plagued by and tormented by a kundalini spirit attacking her. She chose to forgive herself for opening this demonic doorway. And uh, she knew what, what the door was. Jesus revealed it to her. And she called on Jesus to heal that broken area. C.B. presented her case before the Lord, and uh, Jesus' presence grew tangible. She shared, I felt like I was being healed. I felt softer, more peaceful. Then Jesus severed the serpentine spirit's axis and bringing breakthrough and casting off that stronghold. C.B. heard the sweetest words from Jesus, not guilty, over that kundalini influence. It's important for us to pursue these areas, even if we don't hear the Lord the first time. I believe with her, she didn't hear it the first time. We had to pursue the Lord again. There was some blockage. The key to our breakthrough is aligning our prayers with God's will and his word. Jesus cautioned us against vain repetitions in prayer, thinking that we'll be heard for our many words. While persisting, uh, 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 persistence is commended in scripture, the Lord also desires us to embrace new prayer strategies. Jesus shared with us, you know, that we can come before him in several ways, as a friend, as a father, as well as a judge. We must understand that the spiritual arena, it operates on legal principles and grounds established by 
our Heavenly Father. Our petitions and warfare must have a firm legal basis in order to receive answers from I. I, I feel like, you know, uh, Jesus wanted me to share this extra piece here. It's a lot of times when we approach the Lord and uh, approach Jesus in the courtroom or seeking our Heavenly Father for verdicts in our favor, uh, a lot of times is, is that, you know, we haven't uh, been uh, uh, right, wrote everything down. We, we haven't been diligent about uh, the everything that's been uh, coming against us. We go in there, you know, this kind of, uh, I guess I'm going to come to him with this issue here. But we have nothing written down, documentation. You know, if you were to approach a normal courtroom and you were to go there and say, hey, you know, my neighbor is harassing me, but you have no evidence and it's just your word and just what it is. And you have no other uh, things. Oh, that happened um, four or five times, but you didn't write them down. You didn't record it, grab your phone, take video of the accounts that happened. Sometimes we need to be just like that. We need to write down when we're being tormented, especially we don't have time to take care of it right at the moment. We're at work and all of a sudden heavy oppression hits. You know, the other day, you know, my wife and I were at Costco just running some errands. And she shared with me later that the enemy tormented her about something that happened with her daughter many years ago. And was trying to bring guilt on her right there. You know, we're just waiting for some pizza to be made for us so we can go home after getting some supplies. So, you know, uh, the enemy is, uh, is, he just keeps going and tries to come against us. But uh, we need to write down sometimes what these things are. And when we present our case, then we have all of the evidence in front of us. Hey, the enemy tormented me here and said, I'm a loser. If our prayers seem to go unheard, despite persistence, it's likely means that our strategy needs realignment with kingdom laws. Once all obstacles preventing the Lord from responding are handled through proper legal appeals before him, breakthrough will come. As Jesus taught in the parable, we must carefully present our case before the courts of heaven, humbly trusting in the Father's mercy and unwavering grace to intervene. Some stumbling blocks that can hinder our prayers I may include unconfessed sin. You know, we sin a lot, guys. You know, we may hurt our spouse, our friends, you know, may say nasty things. You know, we act, we can even speak curses over them. You'll never succeed. You won't get that job. You're unqualified, you know. A, a lot of times we have a lot of things that we've done and that we haven't brought before Jesus. And that's one of the things that's going to be important here is having the Holy Spirit search you about this. Maybe it's unforgiveness towards uh, others and offenses that give the enemy legal rights. It could be anything, you know, uh, that, that we haven't really brought before Jesus. But as we align our lives with God's word, walk in love, exercise our faith and persist in prayer according to his will, we will see a supernatural intervention. God is faithful to his promises, but we must cooperate with heaven's protocol. So let us not lose confidence in approaching God's throne. If past prayer efforts have not achieved spiritual breakthrough, ask the Holy Spirit, reveal any areas uh, that need to be realigned with you. What needs to be taken care of, God? Uh, God is here for you, and he remains committed to answering your cries for help. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith. Continue the fight, the good fight of faith, through prayer, and trust that God will show up he will show himself to you even stronger on your behalf at just the right time. So what's the purpose of the courts of heaven? Well, why do we even go there? Well, why, why isn't our normal prayer strategies just fine and dandy? Well, the heavenly courts exist to carry out righteous administration of God's kingdom. You know, it'd be so weird if you tried to go into before a courtroom and you were having a grievance with your neighbor, you know, something that you could have handled on your own you decide to go ahead and bring it before our courtroom. You know, the, the, the judge will say, hey, you know, this is something that you guys get to handle at home, you know, or something that you guys need to work out between yourselves. Sometimes we're going approaching the, the courtroom of heaven, and it's not even that prayer strategy that we should be doing at all. Jesus may be sharing with us, hey, I want you to go seek me as a friend. I want you to seek me as a father. I want you to meditate on my word. I want you to seek forgiveness or as well as to forgive others. Maybe it's a bit of inner healing that he wants of you. But as believers, we can gain access to these powerful spiritual realms through prayer and intercession. When we bring our petitions before the Ancient of Days seated in his throne, the Holy Spirit is released to execute 
the just judgments and the decrees from above. In these courts, we can find mercy and grace to help us in our time of need. We can present our cases before the righteous judge, asking for breakthroughs, direction, protection, provision, and freedom from spiritual oppression or legal entanglements here on earth or even spiritual. As we persist in prayer, aligning with our request with God, well, God's will, the gavel of the heavenly judge falls to grant victories, reverse unjust verdicts, and enact justice on our behalf for those who are oppressed. But like Jesus wanted me to share another testimony, we always get a great would we hear a testimony of the Lord and what he's done for healing and restoration. Uh, Julia uh, joined our webinar uh, most recently as well. She was burdened by ongoing mental torment from demonic voices and intrusive thoughts that stole her joy and peace. Despite the spiritual warfare and prayers, because Julia, I've known Julia for a while. She's been uh, doing this for, for a season or so, and, and the Lord was working on her. It's, we're all in a progress of getting restoration, but she just still hadn't found victory. As I guided Julia during the live webinar through forgiveness, repentance, and appeal to the judge uh, of, the, of the universe, Jesus, uh, she experienced his intervention. She shared, I felt really calm. Uh, and she was uh, as well sharing that uh, after we were presenting her case, that no condemnation remained, only Christ's presence to uplift her soul. Her pleas were heard, the verdict rendered, and freedom from torment was unleashed. Jesus came through for her. She knocked on the door. She asked, and she believed that she would get her victory. And that's going to be a key part here, guys. If we don't believe that we'll get her healing, we won't. We don't trust that the Lord will do it. He won't come through. It's our faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone. Nothing else in our relationship with him. Jesus himself modeled how to prevail in prayer before the courts of heaven. He taught us the parable of the persistent widow who kept appealing to the unjust judge until she obtained justice. Through faith-filled prayer and refusal to give up, we can see the same breakthrough as we boldly approach the throne room of grace. The purpose of these courts is to provide a redress for the downrotten and establish uh, justice for the oppressed. As Isaiah prophesied, uh, the Messiah would proclaim justice to the nations. That's Jesus. This was fulfilled as part of Christ's ministry and teaching on prayer. And now, as God's people, we have the same privilege of partnering with him to see his kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In the heavenly courts, it's as if blind justice herself weighs down on every petition's need. The Lord of hosts actively works to bring righteousness and justice to those who suffer under weight of affliction and adversary. As Psalms 103, 6 declares, the Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He labors on behalf of, to the captives and shackled to unjust justice from his throne. When we utilize uh, these courts properly, we align our prayers with the heart of the king for his justice to come over our lives in Jesus' name. All right, I there's more that the Lord wants me to talk about this, but we'll do it in another um, uh, another uh, uh, mentoring class here. What we're going to do next year is just take some questions, walk people through the process of going through inner healing, uh, uh, going before the just judge of the universe. If you've tried to do uh, the courts of heaven all on your own and you got stuck, uh, well, this is a great opportunity to find out what was going on here. Let me go ahead and pin myself, guys. Let me get an opportunity for you guys to be able to speak. Turn that option on. And then if you'd like to raise your hand, I'll be more than happy to walk you through the process or answer some questions here uh, as part of that. So uh, the replay of this is going to be later on this week. We have two webinars here today, so it'll probably be about Thursday or Friday. But you know through email. And you'll see the replays there as well. It'll be on the website. Um, and uh, you'll see some of the testimonies come through. Some of you actually uh, will be uh, written down if, uh, if you volunteer and we'll share what Jesus did. We have no volunteers. There's more things I can share for sure. The Lord has some wonderful uh, more things to say. Do we have any volunteers here or any questions? 
Okay, it looks like we got some questions, some volunteers here. We've got Sarah Miller here and Misty as well. Let me go ahead and go to Sarah Miller. Ping you next to me here, Sarah. And then as well, if you can unmute yourself and show yourself on camera, that would be great. Uh, I can't show on camera. I apologize. I'm on, I'm that's okay, to... Sarah. If I can just, if, as long as we can hear you, that's all right. Share with me what's going on. What questions do you have or what would you like to walk through? Um, so I've been going into the court, like, well, attempting to, but I have no steer capabilities. My, another worry of mine is getting put into the second heaven versus the third, which is extremely easy to do, and I understand that. What would you recommend on that, that, of that happening? Uh, yeah, I would encourage you just to, to stay focused just on the courtroom here. Uh, 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 just bringing the appeals before Jesus Christ. Uh, he knows what courtroom you're going into here. The mercy court is available for everybody. If we try to go into other courtrooms, we may not have access there. And a lot of times we won't find the victory. Uh, yeah. Did you have any other questions here, Sarah? I'm sorry, you completely broke off. Um, I was. Well, you did. Okay, let me go. I'll, I'll, I'll repeat that again, uh, Sarah. I'll encourage you just to tell Jesus when you get there. He knows that you're going into the mercy court. The mercy court is specifically for Christians, um, and we don't have to have any special ability besides being a Christian. Uh, when going to other courtrooms. Uh, we have to have certain rights to get there, a certain position um, uh, as part of it. So uh, Jesus knows that you're going into the mercy court to share with them, Jesus, this is where I want to stay. I don't want to go anywhere else. And I just want to get justice for this uh, injustice that I'm going through. Okay, because I've been praying for this situation for more than three years. And I understand it's all in God's timing, but I am really wondering if it's just something that I am missing. And if there's a blockage, like I've been... Uh, doing spiritual prayers over witchcraft because I know there's a lot of witchcraft going on right now. Yeah. So I'm just trying to figure out like what blockages there are, what the enemy is using against me. Um, there's just so much. Yeah, there's that's so much on. here. You know, when we approach the throne room of grace here, Sarah, is that we can ask Jesus what these are. And the purpose in the courtroom isn't just to get all this justice happen. That's great. But he also wants to heal the legal rights for these open doorways. So he may reveal to you brokenness that's there. A lot of times we're just trying to get, you know, a verdict in our favor and there's work that he needs to do. We've been wounded. We've been hurt. We've been, yeah, there's open doorways, you know, and we may say, hey, I cover it by the blood of Jesus. We move forward. You know, I was listening uh, to one of my mentors to share that, you know, uh, the, the Lord hasn't revealed to him yet. The inner healing is a big process here and wants to heal the legal rights behind it so you know he just says hey i cover it by the blood of jesus you know and confess it as said but a lot of times jesus wants to do more than us confessing it as sin he wants to heal the legal right that's there so if that brought fear anxiety hopelessness whatever then we can have jesus then heal those legal rights set us free from that and get that extra freedom hey let's walk through it together is that okay with you sarah let's go before the courts and see what he has to uh, share with you about this blockage that's here is that okay yeah that would be great thank you perfect and then uh we'll just leave that general blockage he knows what it is hey uh, sarah i'm gonna have you go to a place where you felt the presence of jesus the strongest baby an encounter with them your salvation can you go to a time when he was there for you um there's been several <laughs> Amen. Praise God. He's going to fill you up and take you to one of those memories. Jesus, will you please fill her up from the tips of her toes to the top of her heads in your glory? And Lord, she will stay in your presence. Father, we ask, according to Matthew 18, 18, that the first and second demons of highest authority in everyone are to be bound and escorted to the courts of heaven by two angels, that these demons stay. Jesus, we ask the courts of heaven to be convened, as well as thank you, Jesus, for all books being opened on her behalf all the witnesses being here, including the accuser of the brethren, bringing testimony against her. Jesus, there's an open doorway. There's blockage here. She's been looking for justice for over three years and answers to her prayers. Jesus, will you, will you share with her what legal rights, what open doorways are here that needs to be healed and restored? Don't talk on your heart, Sarah. 
He'll reveal to you what these are. You might hear it's witchcraft, it's curses, it's generational, as well as things that people have done to wound and hurt you. As well as you might even hear, hey, I've done something to hurt someone else. All they are, just open doorways. Share with me what Jesus is sharing with you. Um, there's definitely um, curses being spoken as well as witchcraft. All right, curses and witchcraft. And these are spoken words against you and your family. Thank you, Jesus, for revealing that. See if there's anything else that he needs to, he to heal. Say, Jesus, is there more that you need to heal? Or is that it for now? Oh, there's just a lot of anger. There's a lot of anger Love. right now, and I don't know where it's coming from. All right. Let's have Jesus heal the anger in those two open doorways there. Let's do it together here, uh, Sarah. Say, Jesus, I call on your name and authority. Jesus, I call on your name and authority. I divide soul and spirit. I divide soul and spirit. Please heal this part of me, Jesus. Please heal this part of me. Sarah, can you forgive whoever might be at fault here, or do you need help from Jesus to forgive them? I forgive them in Jesus' mighty name. Man, say, Jesus, will you please uh, testify on my behalf? Jesus, will you please testify on my behalf? Please forgive me for this open doorway. Please forgive me for this open doorway. Jesus, will you please bring a verdict in my favor? Jesus, please bring the verdict in my favor. Please minister and speak to me now. Please minister and speak to me now. Here he comes right now, Sarah. Jesus, thank you for bringing the breakthrough for her. I'll give her these confirmations and moving forward. Taking out that anger, breaking off those legal rights, those chains, those shackles, regards to witchcraft and curses. Thank you, Jesus, for speaking to her and giving her confirmations of moving forward. We're waiting on the Lord here, Sarah. Sarah, think whatever Jesus shares with you. I'm not getting anything. <laughs> That's okay. Let's go back to the, these memories here where anger's here, maybe the open doorway where witchcraft and curses came through. See if Jesus brought peace to those areas if you didn't hear or see Jesus. I just keep, I, so I was on my way to um, pick up my son today and I, I felt this urge to just pray over him and anoint him, which I do have anointing oil in here. And as soon as I picked him up, like he just, like I anointed him, I prayed over him, and then he just ended up telling me about um, his dad throwing him in anger and he him hitting his face. So now he's a mark on his feet. So, like, all that's all I can think about at this point. Like, I am, this, yeah. this, this stuff that I've been fighting with for over three years, and I'm, and I'm so angry. I can't. Like, I'm trying very hard to let this go. I am trying to get it to Jesus, but this, it keeps happening. It stuff keeps happening. So sorry, it's terrible. Christ kind of be very telling to you that there's some here and the anger is still there. Memories are coming up. Those are all signs that Jesus needs to heal that and that he needs to take care of it. He's really good, Sarah, about letting us know, uh, you know, those negative things that come up. We can always gauge it through God's word. He just shared, he only gives us good gifts. Does that make you feel good? No. So that didn't come from the Heavenly Father. As well, the, 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 the Apostle Paul shared that whatever things are pure, holy, just, prayed for, working on these things. So if they don't make you feel good, more likely, Jesus wants to heal, restore it, and let's get the enemy off of there so you can get additional freedom. So he brought up another memory he needs to heal and restore. So let's have him take care of that. Say, Jesus, thank you for bringing this memory up so you can set me free. Jesus, thank you for bringing this memory up to set me free. I call on your name and authority. I call on your name and authority in Jesus' mighty name. Can you forgive them, sir? Or do you need help? I need help. Help me, Jesus, please. Help me, Jesus, please. Help me it's only up. you that can do this. It's only you that can do this. I choose to forgive everyone by faith. I choose to forgive everyone by faith. Jesus, please, car. I'm sorry. What was it's that? okay. Jesus, please work on my heart. Jesus, please work on my heart. Please forgive, him, forgive me for opening up this doorway. Please forgive me, Jesus, for opening this doorway. 
Jesus, please testify. Jesus, please testify. Bring me verdict to my favor. Bring this verdict to my favor. Please, minister, speak to me now. Please, minister, speak to me now, Jesus. Here he comes again, Sarah. Jesus, thank you for bringing the breakthrough. Lord, as well, we take the sword of the spirit. We pierce and cut off the enemy's stronghold over her spiritual ears. Demons detach, leave her alone now. Jesus, bring justice and, and bring, uh, as well as judgment on these demons. Consumption by fire for those who are bringing confusion, not allowing Jesus to come through. Thank you, Jesus, for coming through. Bring up more demons in the same place with the same instruction, Jesus. And with a fair warning, this is what happens to them when they go against God's word. Jesus, thank you for bringing that confirmation of moving forward. We're waiting on the Lord here, Sarah. We'll minister to you, take you back to that memory, bringing peace as well as maybe some encouragement or even an encounter from him. We're waiting on the Lord. Share with me whatever he's doing here, Sarah. He's giving me peace. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing peace. Let's tell the enemy where to go. Say, I command you, demonic spirits. I command you, demonic spirits. Go to the pit in Jesus' name. Go to the pit in Jesus' name. Let's ask you a question. Say, Jesus, are there any other open doorways? Jesus, are there any other open doorways? You need the clothes. I need the clothes. That's it. I'm not getting anything. You're not getting anything. Okay. Let's get the enemy off one more time here. So we just want to make sure that we hear clearly from Jesus. Jesus, will you send forth warring angels to pin these demons down like you did for Daniel? Open up the heavens, please. Thank you so much, Jesus, for binding up these demons and casting them away. Jesus as well. Will you come and bring confirmations and moving forward? Let her hear she's guilty or not guilty. Share with me what you hear. Not guilty. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sarah, you've been waiting for a while to hear not guilty from Jesus. It's just a matter of pursuing him. And sometimes it's just hard to always hear it. And uh, sometimes there's a lot of blockage that's there as part of it. It's always great when we have someone's help. Hey, let's tell the enemy where to go. Say, I command you demonic spirits. I command you demonic spirits. Go to the pit in Jesus' name. Go to the pit in Jesus' name. Let's do one more thing here. Say, Jesus, I search myself by the finger of God. Jesus, I search myself by the finger of God. From the tips of my toes to the top of my head. From the tips so, of my toes to the top of my head. I command that. I command that. Whatever's not of God. Whatever's not of Whatever God. Whatever is not of God. Holy Spirit, reveal it to me. Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit, reveal it to me. Reveal it to Here me. he comes right now. He's going to bring some confirmations here to you. Might hear a name, a function, or nothing. Share with me what you hear. Hear nothing. Nothing. That's good. It's a good thing. Sometimes we might. There might be an extra legal right. We'd like just to make sure. So we're here to thank the Lord for closing this open doorway. Jesus, we thank you for bringing a heavenly verdict in our favor of not guilty over this major open doorway. Uh, Jesus, as well, we know that there's more that you want to do in the courtroom to set her free. And uh, thank you for reading <laughs> to the freaking as part of that. What a blessing of the Lord, Sarah, to bring you a verdict in his favor, huh? Thank you. Amen. Uh, sometimes we just need help here, Sarah. That's all. No, we can always turn to the Lord. He always wants to hear our cry. He always wants to bring freedom and show up for next week as well. We're going to have another one just like this. And we'll go through it. If you feel that, Sarah, you can Thanks, Sarah, for joining in today and volunteering. Thank you. Thank You're you. so welcome. I'll catch you later. Wow. Thank the you. Lord is God and his mercies endure forever. He came through, Sarah. She persisted in prayer as she's been searching for over a couple of years, three years from what she shared, and hasn't found her, her freedom just yet. A lot of times that's what we need to do. We just need to approach Jesus again. Uh, but the, there's many court cases that are open on my behalf and for the ministry's behalf. 
Uh, not everything do I get uh, uh, verdicts in my favor every single time. Some things I do, and I love when I get quick verdicts. They're always great. But um, even though I get the quick verdicts, there's more things that the law wants to do with some of the other issues. Some of them, I know he's told me, hey, Jim, this is a process. I'm taking you through something, especially for the ministry. So I'll bring up issues there, and you know, and all of a sudden, I just want it to be done with. And and all he wants to do in the, in the whole uh, session with him is I'm talking to him in the courts is he'll brokenhearted issues. He'll bring up legal rights. Um, that's hindering something in our ministry. You know, it's like this and this and that, unforgiveness, total resentment. I'm as human as you guys. So then when Jesus shares this, I get it, you'll restore. And then I ask, hey, am I guilty or not guilty? You're guilty again. And well, reassurance from Jesus, keep approaching me. I'll, I'll have you come back here again about this issue. Maybe four or five months later, you'll bring it up again. You know, and then I'm, I'm bringing thing, that same thing before the Lord. I just had one most recently where I got a verdict in my favor. It's been um, uh, like a four-month process of seeking the Lord, and, and he came through. Um, and so praise God that uh, I was persistent, and I didn't give up. I didn't lose hope. And uh, I tried different prayer strategies as part of it. In the beginning, I started as a friend. I pursued him shamelessly, shamelessly in the middle of the night, whatever it was, looking for freedom. He, he just didn't share when he was going to open the door. And then I approached him as father, you know, uh, knowing that he's going to provide my needs daily, knowing that he's going to help me to forgive others, um, as well as you know, help me in the process of overcoming temptation, anger, whatever it is, you know. Um, uh, but I didn't see it there. I praised and worshiped. I read my Bible. I meditated on his word. When I approached him again in the courtroom, sure enough, he showed up and brought freedom. But there's other times where he brought freedom as a friend, and other times he brought freedom as a father, and other times he brought freedom in worship. So. It's not this way is the end all of all prayer strategies. It's finally when the Lord talks on your heart and says, hey, you've been trying for a while. Why don't you try something different and try a different prayer strategy? As part of this next message, thank you so much for joining in today. Got you pinned in next to me. If you'd like to unmute yourself, you can show yourself on camera. That's great. If you don't want to, I understand it. All right. Uh, Misty, uh, share with me, what would you like to bring before the just judge of the universe questions or uh, or just walk through? Um, hi, yes, I would say um, just, yeah, some questions. Um, this is kind of new for me as opposed to, or like as um, going as before, like the courtroom. And um, so, yeah, or maybe just some, some walk through or... Yeah. yeah. Hey, let me share my screen. See, uh, this is inside our training um, uh, for the Courts of Heaven Master Class. I believe it's in the uh, five, six, or seven. I don't know. You have to go in there and check it out. But uh, it's right inside there. It's a worksheet. It brings you right before the Courts of Heaven. It's just a guide. That's all it is. Um, and uh, all you do is approach Jesus through your personal relationship with him. And you ask questions to the just judge of the universe. That's pretty much it. Open up in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you now. I ask the courts of heaven to be convened. We ask that the books be open, uh, as well as all court parties be here. We present your case before uh, our Heavenly Father and have Jesus be our mediator. Heavenly Father, what is the open doorway permitting this accusation to stand? And like what you saw just a moment ago, during this time, Jesus searched the person's heart, Sarah's heart, revealed to her the root cause of the accusation. It could be generational, witchcraft, curses, negative memories from our past, likely it's a legal right. Once the accusations have been identified, bring them before Jesus as your friend and brother. Try to present each accusation individual if possible. When you're ready for it, Jesus reveal it to you. Jesus, in your name and authority, I separate soul and spirit. Jesus, will you heal this part of me? Jesus, I choose to forgive whoever it is if forgiveness is needed. If it's not needed, it's okay, you know, just move on. Hey, I just feel uh, a terror. I don't know why. Just move on. If you need help, help me, Jesus, to forgive that person as well as part of that. Uh, thank you, Jesus, for applying your blood and this legal right. Then at the end, you're going to say, Heavenly Father, I request Jesus to be my mediator, to testify on my behalf. Jesus, please, minister, speak to me about this issue. Give me confirmations of moving forward. After you receive your confirmation, ask Jesus, are there any more accusations like we did a second ago for this major open doorway? If you hear yes, determine what they are. Repeat the process. If you hear no, ask Jesus, am I guilty or am I not guilty? 
If you hear not guilty, thank the Lord. Then have a closing statement. If you hear guilty, then complete the process. Do it again. Then as well, at the very end, do have a, a closing statement. Write down some scriptures, find some support um, uh, for recourse. Because the little woman who was looking for justice, she got uh, justice for the injustice. So if they stole her home, if they took her money from her, you know, her belongings, she would get that return. But sometimes they were like, you know, uh, uh, like, like here uh, on earth, they'd give her like, you know, a for uh, all the pain and suffering, you know, a million dollar reward for pain and suffering. You know, of course, you know, you're going to find scriptural support and say, hey, you know, for the pain and suffering, you know, uh, I'm asking for this. But, and then as well, at the very end, thank the Lord, um, close and get out of the courts of heaven and move on with your day. So that's a little small walkthrough here. Misty, what would you like Jesus to heal and restore and do a walkthrough together? Um, well, um, I would say I've been, um, just kind of really going through, like, there's been a lot of, you know, so, like, um, let's see, well, just like how you started in the beginning and how you said, you know, where it seems like a lot of unanswered prayers or, and kind of getting discouraged or like this, you know, or just not knowing which way and where to go and like how to. I don't know, I've been having, I just came out of like one of the darkest seasons in my life. And so, and then just, um, you know, battling demons and going through spiritual warfare and going through all that and just kind of, you know, um, so, um, but God saved me, you know, and mercy on me. We're all in work of so, progress here, Miss B. Yeah, you know, none of us right. are burning. We all don't have a down. We're, <laughs> we're all, we're all just uh, try our best, you know, to, to be uh, good and make sure that we get ourselves to restored by the Lord. So there, a lot of times this happens where we feel this discouragement come through. I want to share one more thing on the screen here with you, uh, uh, Misty. It's our spiritual worker training through inner healing and yeah. uh, it's free on the website as well. Um, and this is the worksheet that's there. And this is just normal spiritual warfare coming to Jesus as friend and father. When something comes up and you're having a hard time uh, getting freedom, um, and you just find just the blood today, Jesus, what's going on? Whatever the issue is, right then and there, in the name of the authority of Jesus, I separate soul and spirit for what's going on right now. I command these yeah. evil spirits to leave me, detach and leave me now in Jesus' name. Again, forgiveness is needed. So it's similar to the courts of heaven for the inner healing portions, just a little bit different. But you don't have to go in intense with this because you may, a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll spend all of this time in the courtroom, Misty. And Jesus says, I'm sorry, that's not the prayer strategy that's going to get victory. Right. And so we don't know. So we're perishing for this lack of knowledge. And so, you know, the Lord may say, hey, try this one. Eh, or, uh, the victory is somewhere else through worship. The other day I was going through heavy depression like everyone. And uh, uh, instantly I hear Jesus say, turn on your favorite worship song, this one. So I turned it on and instantly the presence of God came through. So the prayer strategy was no prayer at all. It was worshiping the Lord. Uh, it was a different strategy. So it was just a way for me to get freedom. Um, so if he shares something else, sometimes that's what we'll do. But let's go before the Lord about this blockage that's here. It seems like, like a major blockage, right? Mm -hmm. All right, let's do that before Jesus. Jesus, we, got, we thank you that the courts of heaven have been convened over her life. And everyone here, Jesus, the main accusation in the doorway, the legal right, is blocked. Confusion. Things happening that just don't seem to always come to what she was hoping for it to be, Lord. Would we share with her, what's the legal right? What's the open doorway for this confusion? Jesus is searching your heart here, Misty. He'll reveal to you some of these open doorways. Share with me whatever he shares with you. We'll wait patiently. Everyone. I don't know if it's fear, the worry, um, you know, um, I used to, before having backslidden, I had this strong, real faith, you know, uh, you know, um, and then ever since I backslid and uh, went through all you know, that stuff, um, it's just been a, yeah, Jesus brought to your attention here. So let's go ahead and have him heal this, Misty. Say, Jesus, thank you for bringing up this brokenness. Jesus, thank you for bringing up this brokenness. I divide soul and spirit. I divide soul and spirit. I call on your name and authority. 
I call your name and authority. Is there anyone that you need to forgive? Yourself, God, friends, family members because of it? I mean, there's myself. I mean, I'm being going through this, you know, so, yeah. Of course. And I'm forgiving myself, you know, and I just, it's just, yeah. Not knowing which way to go, where to go, and how to do it, and where, and what to do, and yeah. Say, Jesus, will you help me? Will you help me? I choose to forgive myself by faith. I choose to forgive myself by faith. Jesus, will you testify on my behalf? Jesus, will you testify on my behalf? Will you please forgive me for opening up the stairway? Will you please forgive me for opening up the stairway? Please bring me a verdict in your favor. Please bring me a verdict in your favor. Please, minister, speak to me now. Speak to me now, minister. To me now. Here he comes now, Misty. Jesus, thank you for coming through. Thank you for having that personal relationship with her and bringing freedom to her. Jesus, give her confirmations and moving forward as well. I'm just seeing in the courtroom here, uh, Jesus has pulled out the sword of the spirit. I'm seeing he has a shield as well. I'm victory on there just seeing that he's using this shield to be a, a shield over you and keep in <laughs> as well as seeing that with the sword that he's cutting off that sever and, and that tie between you and the enemy i'm hearing jesus say that he's bringing breakthrough as well as there's a temporary hold of, of harassment against you as part of this as you bring the issues before the lord jesus will as well bring some confirmations to you that this issue has been healed and restored and bring peace. Share with me whatever he's doing here. What's he doing here for you, Misty? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I can just like see when you said that with this, with the shield, you know, because the enemy has had many attempts in my life. I've been through drug addiction, you know, streets, drug, all those things. And, you know, and then I went into ministry and got onto all that. I completely turned my life around and then, after nine years had backslid it and then just um and it just kind of went back to you know or all that stuff but i just seen him as my shield right there you know he was shielding me you know and then you said it with the spirit you know the sword of the spirit the word of god you know and just like and that's um you know and i'm learning as you know to decreeing declaring god's written word you know um and praying in it, that effective way of like, God, it is written in your word that you, you know, and so, um, and like presenting it as a case. And so, but I just call that, I keep the shield, you know, it just takes time over to me. The, 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 yeah. the process, you know, right. and, I, I, I yeah. didn't get to know immediately. I, there was a lot of confusion in the courtrooms. I, I was taught by Dr. Scott, you know, about the courtrooms and doing it for deliverance. And it was quite a bit different than what it is here. Um, you know, it was, it was more than you know, the demons would come up and speak, you know, and people would thrash around and be weird. And then I heard a peaceful and calm to have these demons so tied up, shut their head order on them, and then let Jesus reveal more ways that he needs to heal. And so uh, in the very beginning, again, it wasn't always easy. The more I, the Lord, the more taught me, like the Holy Spirit, you know, he says, he'll guide and lead us into all truth. He'll, he'll teach us. You know, uh, uh, and everything. So that's what he did, and he'll help you as well. It's just our relationship yeah. with Christ, Miss Dean. We get to approach him. So, uh, just encouragement. I know for me that if I am not consistent in my prayer, in reading my Bible, and approaching Jesus, all it takes is one day messing out. The enemy will just loves to creep in and bring in deception, yeah. frustration, aggravating, and even when I'm on fire for God and it's been a great day. The enemy still comes against me and it it doesn't take moments, hours, you know, for me to recognize spiritual warfare and stay in it. So uh, again, our hearts and minds staying steadfast in Christ is going to be so important. So if you're watching Joe TV, you know, maybe some encouragement, turn on, you know, some good stuff, you know, like the gospels or the chosen, great music too, you know, keep our, our focus on the Lord with worship and praise, you know. And there's times that I don't want to listen to worship. So, yeah, I found a new guy. I think he's called ASA Breach or someone on TikTok. But he's on fire, just a rapper, you know? And I'm not listening to rap songs. I mean, sound like God, you know, until you hear the word. But it's funny. So the Lord will use many different aspects of our lives that we can enjoy 
and turn around and make it fun and, and have a, a good life and just depend on him. He's going to help yeah. you through this, Misty. He's doing some great work for you. You're pursuing the Lord. Don't give up. And just the right time, God will come through and bring freedom. Thank you, Jesus, for mm-hmm. showing her that shield, that sword, and letting her know that she's victorious in you. Hey, let's see if there's any other open doorways here. Say, Jesus, am I guilty or not guilty about this issue? Jesus, am I guilty or not guilty about this issue? Let me share with you. Not guilty. Not guilty. We've got a second non-guilty verdict. Wow. Thank you, Jesus, for coming through for Misty and healing her of this legal right, this area. Jesus, you came through. The broken heart of issue bound up those wounds, set her free, and took off the enemy's stronghold. Hey, let's do one more thing here. Say, I search myself by the finger of God. I search myself by the finger of God. From the tips of my toes to the top of my head. From the tips of my toes to the top of my head. I command that. I command that. Whatever's not of God. Whatever's not of God. Holy Spirit, reveal it to me. Holy Spirit, reveal it to me. I'm going to hear a name, a function, or nothing. What do you hear? And then... You might not hear anything. That's okay if you don't. Well, well, well wait a second. Pretty quiet. Okay, that's perfect. That's all right. You got a verdict in God's favor or a blessing that Jesus gave to you here. I'll encourage you to check out that training. Go through the spiritual worker training through inner healing and just turn to Jesus. Something comes up, yeah. tattletale on the enemy. Jesus, the enemy is doing this to me. I call on your name and authority. I divide souls. Yes. Get these demons off. Heal this part of me. And the Lord will be right here. You know, breaking yeah. through strongholds and setting you free. He hears our cries, Misty. He, uh, like he shared, you know, is he going to keep putting us off? He says, no. Our Heavenly Father will grant justice. And he'll come quickly and swiftly. As part of that, what a blessing. Thank you, Misty, for volunteering today. Thank you. Thank You're you. So welcome. <laughs> Later, Misty. Bye. Bye-bye. Uh, good. Two verdicts in God's favor. Now, I-, I want you guys to catch something as part of this. It was Misty's and Sarah's personal relationship with Jesus. And all they did is approach the mercy court and ask, questions. Jesus, I approach your mercy. Here's what's happening. Here's my problem. I'm hearing voices, feel demonic oppression. I am feeling a uh, hopeless and built a fear. I'm blocked. Whatever the issue is, they approach Jesus. Jesus then shares with them open doorways, legal rights. He brings them up. It's his relationship with you, where he searches us out. He says, hey, here's a brokenhearted piece at the root that he needs to heal. So then he says, let's pull this out. Let's get this yuckiness, this corruption, this legal right that the enemy's been tormenting, aggravating you, driving you insane, making you think you're going crazy. But, you know, the enemy's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. And so God says, hey, with that personal relationship, let me get the theme enough. Let me heal the brokenness, help you to forgive others. You'll see there's a process that, that he does. And uh, if by chance, if Misty happened to other issues pop up, that you'd walk through the process again. Oh, yeah, it's that time that that person broke my heart, my trust. You know, they were a good friend. They were a good partner in business, whoever they are. Whatever Jesus reveals, open doorways. He just wants to take the pain away, the legal rights to set us free. And that's what he did for both of them. So, uh, again, encouragement, just keep searching and seeking the Lord. It's not a hard process. It's just a matter of just being patient and bringing the issues up. Um, I was the other day, I was walking through a session and uh, boy, it was it was uh, just going for a while. You know, uh, they kept having blockage over and over and over again. And when uh, they finally uh, got their breakthrough, uh, they were like, wow, I can't believe I finally got my uh, but they were they were persistent, you know. They just kept pursuing the Lord, and so that's are, are going to be our thing. Just pursue the Lord. Don't give up. We got Carmen here. We're going to do one more. Carmen, thank you so much for joining in. Opinion next to me. 
You want to turn on your camera and your microphone, go right ahead. Share with me if you have questions or uh, you'd like to walk through the process. Hi there, can you hear me? I sure can. Thank you so much, Carmen. Yeah, thank you for um, getting my spot as well because um, I was really touched when I was hearing Sarah's sharing somehow because I wasn't really paying attention, but somehow the spirit just had me kept crying. And um, I actually have really a, a big case to bring to the Lord and it has been um, a year now. It's like really mysterious um, spiritual attack um, attacking our whole family, me and my husband and our daughter. And um, it was actually about um, like spiritual attack uh, for my daughter and, and my husband and that um, my husband tried to draw um, the evil spirit away from my daughter and my daughter was only um, one year old uh, or just a bit um, uh, yeah, older than one year old. And that um, at some point, somehow like my, my husband felt um, the, the leading of the Holy Spirit, like he says so, and then just cast out the demons from her. But then suddenly she dropped dead and it was it. Like we, we tried to resurrect her and we couldn't. And then eventually it was really crazy, the whole story. But I, I you know, if it's too long, I would love to um, have a one-on-one -on -one session with you. I, that would be great. Um, and then um, we were actually accused of being murderer. Um, and, and it was a year ago and then, um, and then the Lord, um, helped us through, um, having, uh, serving in the prison for some time. And then, um, and then eventually the cause of death of our daughter was not found. And then we were, we were, um, uh, being, uh, changing the charge into child abuse or neglect instead and serving just three months of sentencing. But anyway, it was a miracle itself. But then um, the, the thing is, like, my my husband has gone through a lot of trauma from this as well, right? And then the, the enemy just kept on tormenting him. And and right now he got into um, uh, the Mental Health Institute again because um, I think right now it's actually um, the demon trying to oppress him and control him um, and that he's manifesting a lot in inside the institute. And then, of course, the doctors doesn't believe in the spiritual things. So no one is helping him and, and all that. So, yeah, I'm just crying out to the Lord because yeah. in three days in a row, he he's just like manifesting crazy stuff and and he's just being very confused in his mind, thinking that it was um, the Holy Spirit and God trying to speak to him. But things are just unbiblical. So I think there are many things there. Um, but uh, I, I think one thing that came to my mind when um, I was crying and I feel convicted by the Lord um, just now when I heard um, you were guiding Sarah is that I've been trying to pray and pray and, and keep trusting the Lord. But I seldom really come quiet before the Lord and seek him and ask him questions and just listen and wait on him. And I think the Lord just, um, yeah, just touched me there is that like, yeah, I, I've been trusting the Lord and, and I mean, the, the prayers and God's goodness and faithfulness got us through this whole um, trial and all that. And, and that, um, yeah, but then uh, I, I just feel convicted that, yeah, why, why not just come to him and ask him um, and, and that he will guide me through this. And it was just a lovely process to, to hear like how God loves to um, grant us justice, right? In fact, one of the justice is that what one more thing uh, finally um, is that my, my husband, um, he was actually normal, um, totally stable. And suddenly he got admitted forcefully into the hospital, into the mental health hospital, because they found some pictures of us um, and at that time, we, uh, I mean, my husband, um, he was actually repenting and then suddenly he got into a manifestation and then he cast that spirit out of himself and I took pictures of it. And then they, they, they somehow have the record of the photo because my, my brother got the photo and then reported to the um, doctors without me knowing, without my husband knowing. And suddenly he got um, caught up in, in the mental health hospital yeah. and then... Um, he was not unstable at all. He was totally fine. And then the doctor um, was actually trying to say, 
well, we're afraid that things happen will happen again, like last year, um, because the the Hong Kong society is really concerned about mental health issue right now um, for some murder or case in the past. But then um, they're trying to block him, um, lock him out into the um, halfway house and like stop us to live together. And we've been separated for a long time because of um, the the tragedy, right? And so I was like appealing to I really want to bring this to the Lord and then right now um yeah since the doctor was saying that you know he has to be in the halfway house you guys have to separate for some time and stuff so we were really unhappy about this and and really um wanting to ask God for justice on that um but at the same time right now he's manifesting like just yeah. two days ago like I'll, I'll yeah. encourage you Carmen that as well as to pray for your husband behind the scenes you or him are one flesh uh, you can approach the mercy court of heaven to get justice there. You can even uh, deal with Bella's yeah. friend or even father and just do um, and intercede on his behalf and say, hey, Jesus, I left up my husband for you. Whatever spirits are there, you know, they stand yeah. in a gap. Help me, Jesus, you know, and pray for him as well. I'll encourage yeah. you. One extra step, Carmen, is, is as well. Yeah. Print out the worksheets, you know, from the spiritual warfare training. It's right on the website. You can download it, okay. print it out on paper, and then say, leave it around the house for your husband. I encourage a lot of people who uh, do like foster care and, and uh, as, as part of that or adopt, you know, a lot of kids. What they'll uh, I'll do is we'll say, hey, just leave the paper out with the worksheet and, and uh, let people find it. And then they start using it. What's this? I don't know. Check it out. Yeah, as, as part of that. So, uh, Carmen, uh, unfortunately, I won't be able to bring you before the courts here. We're running out of time yeah. here today. I got a pretty d busy day ahead of me as part of it. But uh, yeah. if you uh, go ahead and join the next webinar, I'll call on you first, uh, uh, Carmen, and uh, we'll just later on today, if you have the ability. And if not, just book a uh, consultation or a session with me. We'll walk through that process. Mm -hmm. That would be great. Yeah, I'm actually joining. Um, in is it in six hours later or something? Yeah, six um, hours from now. Yeah, yeah. I'll take a take a rest and then I'll join again. Um, I'm joining from Hong cool. Kong. I'll walk yeah. you through that process there. Is that all right with you? Yeah, it would be great. And also, um, shall I be doing it on behalf of my husband rather sure. than? Sure. Well, I'd like to just do it for for you in the beginning. And then uh, my encouragement, Carmen, is for you to stand in the gap for your husband as part of that. Um, to okay. bring up those additional issues. We usually go, even though we're praying for somebody else, the Lord always reveals things about ourselves that he wants to take yeah, care of. Yeah. So uh, even Definitely. when you stand in the gap for him, he'll say, hey, there's other things I want to do as part of it. Hey, Carmen, I thank you again uh, for yeah. volunteering thank here so and asking, and I'll be more than happy to walk you through that in the next one, okay? Thank you so much. Yeah, have a sure. great day. All right, I'll let you go, yeah. Carmen. All right, we're yeah. going to go ahead and close in prayer, everyone here. I know that most of you are gone, and uh, we're just going to thank Jesus for a great day. Jesus, thank you for doing all the work, and we close out the courts of heaven over everyone's life here. Jesus, we declare freedom for your servants, and we thank you that the courts of heaven have now been closed, and the kingdom of God has come upon them all. Lord, thank you for being with them for the rest of this week. Continue to lead and guide them into truth, and we thank you, Father, that you're bringing up what you want to heal the most. And thank you, Lord, for us being sensitive to your Holy Spirit. And we give you all of the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thanks everyone for joining in here today. We'll see you in the next webinar.